dirty Rex. I was going to, but I've forgotten how to use my, there we go. This is actually a super chat. Usually wait a little while to do super chats, but I'm out of practice. Uh, thank you for a $5 super chat, Dirty Rex. Would you recommend a three inch or a five inch for those that are ready to switch from Sim to live? Um, Dirty Rex, I, I think that three inches and five inches are both good. I think if you are experienced in the simulator enough that you can basically fly a quadcopter, then there's no reason for you to hold back from going to a five inch. Um, I've taught a lot of people to fly. Uh, and what I find is that if you make sure that they are competent in the simulator, then it's fine for them to go straight to five inch. They are just as competent in when they go to five inch as they are in the sim. Um, maybe a little less. Like like sometimes people can do like tricks in the simulator and they don't have the confidence to do those tricks in real life. But the gist of it, the flying safely, right? And that's what we're concerned mostly about is safety. Um, it's the same. So if someone got competent in the sim, to the point where they could fly around basically without crashing too much. And the other thing I look for when I'm graduating somebody from the sim to real life is the ability to recover. Like they start to get out of control and then they kind of get it back. And I go, okay, you're good to go. Once they're ready to go, I move them to a three inch, I move them to a five inch, I don't really care. It just depends on what they're looking for. If you're excited about five inch racing or five inch freestyle, you go straight to a five inch. If you go straight to a five inch and you get careless, the consequences will be worse than with a three inch. So you have to decide how you feel about that, but there's no reason to hold back. Three inches, they're gonna be smaller, they're gonna be quieter, they may be cheaper, especially uh, if you go to something really durable uh, you can usually get more durability out of a three inch than a five inch, although that's not universal. So there are some reasons to pick a three inch or a five inch, but those reasons are going to be the same reasons you would pick a three inch or a five inch anyway. The fact that you're like, you don't need to do like from sim to three inch, then to five inch as some sort of artificially enforced graduation protocol. So that's how I would take that. Three inch is really fun. Um, some, a three inch, like the tiny trainer is really fun. A three inch, like a Cinewhoop, like the Cinebot 3.0 is really nice and durable. Uh, doesn't fly as well. A five inch is, is, is great. It just depends on what you want. Uh, let's see here. Maddie O wants to know what foam I'm running on my walk snail goggles. Maddie O, uh, let's double check this real quick. Where are my walk snail goggles? Where are my walk snail goggles? Are they in here? I think they're in here. Oh, yay! I didn't lose my walk snail goggles. Isn't that nice? My DJI V2s. Put those back in there. I still haven't completely unpacked from traveling. Uh, the walk snail goggle foam. <laughs> it is the DJI goggle foam. And it's too big for the walk snail goggles, but it's just kind of crammed on there. It's the DJI goggle foam. I, I don't like actually recommend this. It's, but it, it worked for me. There you go. It's the aftermarket DJI goggle foam. Let's see here. Dan Williams. Good question, Dan. How do I set up Edge TX to have no heli and EU? I've seen the checkboxes in Companion. Does that change the firmware to EU mode in the TX? So Dan Williams, those checkboxes in Companion only change what firmware is downloaded. When you download firmware, they do not change the functioning of your radio. Um, as far as I know, those checkboxes in Edge TX Companion don't have an effect if they're there at all, because op the way Open TX works is they have a cloud build service where you check the boxes and then it downloads a build for your radio. I think maybe they maybe they precompile them. I don't know, but Edge TX, I believe that they are not doing all those options. There's just one compiled build of Edge TX that you get, and so. 
as far as the no heli option goes, I don't think any of my HDX radios show that heli screen. So I assume that they're all compiled with no heli. Uh, yeah. Um, as far as the EU, uh, the EU option is only going to matter if you have, I don't know. I mean, I guess some people run HTX on a FreeSky radio. I'm not sure about that. I don't think, though, that HTX has the ability to download customized option firmware and flash them. Whenever you flash HTX, whenever I flash HTX, it just flashes whatever default options it wants to flash. Uh, and, and, and so if you're using HTX, I don't think you have the option to change those things. Uh, is my take. I'm looking now at the chat to see if, uh, bye Fabio, to see if anybody's disagreeing with me. No one is. Uh, let's see. People are recommending. I'd like to try this. I'm still looking for the best foam for my DJI goggles. This looks pretty good, actually. Uh, maybe I'll buy this and try it out. I still haven't found, like, the perfect foam for my DJI goggles. This looks pretty good, actually. Oh, I like that. That looks exciting. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll try that one out. It's a good suggestion. Um, Let's see here. Okay, i got to take those out of the queue. Wait, it is out of the queue. It uh, looks like chat, a couple of people in chat have mentioned that HTX 2.9 will add the ability to remove some of those pages like before, but like otherwise, like you're saying before, it's been pre-built, it seems. But like it, it, that's so like, for example, on the Jumper T20, I noticed that there was an option in the radio setup to turn off certain pages, which I had never seen before. And I'm guessing they're shipping it with a pre-release version of HTX. Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Yeah. So it won't be a separate compile. It'll be runtime options that you change in the radio, which is great. I'll take that 100%. Mm. I don't know about the EU option, though. Let's uh, talk about Wesley Vardy, since he was in the chat. I don't know if he still is. Uh, Wesley Vardy, uh, you may know him as the uh, long-range YouTube guy, did a lot of long-range testing. Uh, range testing. Uh, well, he was one of the only guys doing range testing of RC and video links, actually flying them out to failure instead of, uh, you know, doing less than that. A uh, huge amount of really, really good data. And I always wondered, well, how is that legal? But he was in some foreign country. I assumed that the rules were different there. Uh, turns out I was wrong. It turns out he was in a country where what he was doing was considered uh, not allowed and his local government came and found him and said you're in trouble and he took all his videos down and crossed his fingers that if he just laid low and was a good little boy he would not receive any severe punishment and uh he just found out that he got a three thousand dollar fine uh i only just learned about the three thousand dollar fine thanks to a video from ian mads tech which came out just this evening, my time. <clears throat> and uh, good news, good news as far as I know, uh, he he has a GoFundMe to pay the fine. It was a $3,000 fine. And uh, I believe that it is all paid for immediately. Like just immediately. Uh, I'm hearing uh, underneath Madstech's video, Madstech said that the GoFundMe was funded and actually Madstech took the link down as far as I can tell. Yeah, within uh, three hours okay. it was funded. Okay, great. I want to confirm One that that's true. person donated the second half, which is $1,350. Pretty crazy. Yeah, wow. One anonymous person donated $1,350. So his fine is covered, and we are asking... Um, we are asking if you would like to donate to Wesley Vardy, but you have... you Now you can't, because he already covered his expenses... Instead, donate to the Express LRS project, which Wesley Vardy works for. Um, and we can make a donation. Let's see here. How am I doing? 
Oh, I got, I've gotten pushed way down. Oh, no, it goes this way. Okay. All right, I'm still doing pretty good. But I should probably give a little more because I definitely was going to donate to Wesley. Uh, I'm not going to make a big show about doing it on stream and, you know, conspicuous consumption or anything. But uh, 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 here is the link if you would like to donate to the Express LRS project. They do a lot of good work. And uh, thanks to everybody who covered him. Uh, the first thing I thought was, oh, he got a fine. Obviously, well, I'm going to contribute because obviously the work he did was incredibly valuable. And uh, so kudos to that. What I want to know, though, is Wesley still in the chat? There he is. He's there. Wesley, now that you've been fined, can you put the damn videos back up? Like the the the, the crime has been done. The penalty has been uh, enacted and paid. What are they going to find you some more if you put the videos up? Obviously, Wesley Vardy has to make that decision for himself. He's the one whose ass is on the line. But I have to say, from my perspective, I put the fucking videos. Pardon me. I put the videos back up. You've been you've been punished. Oh, huh. yeah, I was just gonna. I was, I was literally gonna point the same thing out. They only list God, one bitches. video. The sons yeah. of bitches. They only dinged him for one of his videos. So if he puts the videos back up, they'll be like, oh, I see. You want to screw around. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Well, maybe we shouldn't make too big a deal out of the fact that he funded his, uh, his fine in like three hours. Because they'll be like, oh, I like the faster you raise money the more they go, oh, I, apparently we can squeeze money out of you. And apparently we're not actually punishing you. So maybe we'll play it, play it low, play it safe. 